Laudetur Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ. I'd like to welcome all of you to this live broadcast. We're coming to you from St. Peter's Square right now. We will be joining our Holy Father shortly for the Wednesday general audience inside the library of the Apostolic Palace, of course, due to coronavirus measures enforced here in Italy as well as in other parts of the world. From ever, wherever you're joining us, I'd like to take the opportunity to welcome you to this broadcast, many of you joining through various Vatican media platforms. We now join the audience and we'll continue a bit later. We begin with the liturgy greeting, the greeting of the liturgy, and we make ourselves open to receiving his words and blessing. At this point of this event, we will hear a reading from the letter to the Hebrews, beginning in Italian, followed by French and other languages. Alla Gerusalemme celeste e a migliaia di angeli, alla donanza festosa e all'assemblea dei primogeniti, i cui nomi sono scritti nei cieli, al Dio giudice di tutti e agli spiriti dei giusti resi perfetti, a Gesù, mediatore dell'alleanza nuova, e al sangue purificatore che è più eloquente di quello di Abele. Parola di Dio. Rendiamo grazie a Dio. De la lettre aux Hébreux. Vous êtes venu vers la montagne de Sion e vers la ville du Dieu vivant, la Jérusalem céleste, vers des myriades d'anges en fait, et vers l'assemblée des premiers-nés dont les noms sont inscrits dans les cieux. Vous êtes venus vers Dieu, le juge de tous, et vers les esprits des justes amenés à la perfection. Vous êtes venus vers Jésus, le médiateur d'une alliance nouvelle, et vers le sang de l'aspersion, son sang qui parle plus fort que celui d'Abel. Parole du Seigneur. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. You have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to a judge who is God of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks more graciously than the blood of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The same passage will now be proclaimed in German, followed by Spanish and Portuguese. I continue to welcome all of you joining us through the various Vatican Media channels, the Vatican Media Live Events app, the Radio Vaticana app, our Vatican News web portal, English YouTube channel, or our Facebook Live feed. To our television viewers, welcome to all of you joining us through Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World TV, Sultan Light TV, EWTN, Catholic TV, and at Madarshan TV. And there are some radio listeners among you as well. We welcome you joining us through Radio Maria and Papua New Guinea and Luminous Radio, and of course to all of you joining us through other digital platforms. De la carta a los hebreos. Ustedes se han acercado a la montaña de Sion, a la ciudad del Dios vivo, que es la Jerusalén celestial, a una multitud de ángeles, a la celebración y asamblea de, que están, de los que están inscritos en el cielo, a Dios, juez de todos, a los espíritus de los justos que han llegado a la perfección, a Jesús, mediador de la nueva alianza, y a la aspersión de una sangre purificadora mucho más elocuente que la de Abel. Palabra de Dios. Leitura da carta aos hebreus. Vós vos aproximastes do monte Sião e da cidade do Deus vivo, a Jerusalém celeste. 
da reunião festiva de milhões de anjos, da Assembleia dos Primogênitos, cujos nomes estão escritos nos céus, de Deus, o Juiz de todos, dos Espíritos dos Justos, que chegaram à perfeição, de Jesus, mediador da nova aliança e da aspersão do sangue mais eloquente que o de Abel. Palavra do Senhor. The last two languages, this New Testament passage will be proclaimed in his Arabic and Polish. أما أنتم فقد اقتربتم من جبل الصهيون ومدينة الله الحي أورشليم السماوية ومن ربوات الملائكة في حفلة عيد من جماعة الأبكار المكتوبة أسماءهم في السماوات من إله ديان الخلق أجمعين ومن أرواح الأبرار الذين بلغوا الكمال من يسوع وسط عهد جديد من دم يرش كلامه أبلغ من كلام دم هبيل كلام الرب Czytanie z listu do hebrajczyków. Wy natomiast przystąpiliście do góry Syjon, do miasta Boga żyjącego, Jeruzalem niebieskiego, do niezliczonej liczby aniołów na uroczyste zebranie, do kościoła pierworodnych, którzy są zapisani w niebiosach, do Boga, który sądzi wszystkich, do duchów sprawiedliwych, które już doszły do celu, do pośrednika Nowego Testamentu, Jezusa, do pokropienia krwią, która przemawia mocniej niż krew Abla. Oto Słowo Boże. We now move into the catechesis portion of the audience. We're in the middle of a series on prayer. This is the 23rd audience dedicated to this topic, and today the theme is dedicated to prayer in the liturgy. We'll now hear the words of our Holy Father on this theme. Dari fratelli e sorelle, buongiorno. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. Si è più volte registrata nella storia della Chiesa In the history of the Church, there's often been a temptation to practice an intimist Christianity, which does not recognize the spiritual importance of public liturgical ritual. Often this tendency claimed the supposed greater purity of a religiousness that did not depend on external ceremonies which were considered a useless or harmful burden. At the center of the criticism was not a particular ritual form or a particular way of celebrating, but rather the liturgy itself and the criticism against a, a form of liturgical prayer. Indeed, in the church, one can find certain forms of spirituality that have failed to adequately integrate the liturgical moment. Many of the faithful, while participating assiduously in the rites, especially Sunday Mass, have drawn nourishment for their faith and spiritual life rather from other Instead of drawing the nourishment from the Sunday Mass, they draw it rather from sources of devotional type. Much has been achieved in recent decades. The Constitution Sacrosanctum Concilium of the Second Vatican Council represents a pivotal point in this long journey. It comprehensively and organically reaffirms the importance of the Divine Liturgy for the life of Christians who find therein that objective mediation required by the fact that Jesus Christ is not an idea or a sentiment, but is a living person, 
And his mystery is a historical event. The prayer of Christians passes through tangible mediations. Sacred scripture, the sacraments, liturgical rites, the community. In the Christian life, the corpor corporeal and material sphere may not be dispensed with because in Jesus Christ, that became the way of salvation. We could say that, that yes, now we have a body and the body enters into prayer. Therefore, a Christian spirituality does not exist that is not rooted in the celebration of the holy mysteries. The Catechism writes, The mission of Christ and of the Holy Spirit proclaims, makes present, and communicates the mystery of salvation, which is continued in the heart that prays. The liturgy in itself is not merely spontaneous prayer, but something more and more original. Even in the sparest rite, such as that which Christians have celebrated, the liturgy is a prayer, it is an event, it is happening, it is presence, it is encounter. Christ makes himself present in the Holy Spirit through the sacramental signs, hence the need for us Christians to participate in the divine mysteries. A, a Christian Christianity without liturgy, I would say, is a Christianity without Christ, the whole Christ. Even in the sparest rite, such as that which some Christians have celebrated and continue to celebrate in places of imprisonment or in the seclusion of a house during times of persecution, Christ is truly present and gives himself to his faithful. The liturgy, precisely because of its objective dimension, needs to be celebrated with fervor so that the grace poured out in the rite is not dispersed but instead reaches everyone. The Catechism explains it very well. It says it this way, prayer internalizes and assimilates the liturgy during and after its celebration. Many Christian prayers do not originate from the liturgy, but all of them, if they are Christian, presuppose the liturgy, that is, the sacramental mediation of Jesus Christ. Every time we celebrate a baptism or consecrate the bread and wine in the Eucharist or anoint the body of a sick person with holy oil, Christ is here. It is he who, who does this. It is he who is present. He is present just as he was when he healed the weak limbs of a sick person, or when at the Last Supper he delivered his testament for the salvation of the world. The prayer of the Christian makes the sacramental presence of Jesus his or her own. What is external to us becomes part of us. The liturgy expresses this even in the very natural act of eating. The Mass cannot simply be listen to. And this is an expression that's not correct. I go to listen to the Mass. This is commonly used in Italy. The, the Mass doesn't, isn't something we just listen to, as if we were merely spectators of something that slips away without our involvement. The Mass is always celebrated and not only by the priest who presides over it, but by all Christians who experience it. The center is Christ. 
All of us in the diversity of gifts and ministries, all of us join in his action. Because he, Christ, is the protagonist of the liturgy. When the first Christians began to live a life of worship, they did so by actualizing Jesus' deeds and words with the light and power of the Holy Spirit, so that their lives, reached by that grace, would become a spiritual sacrifice offered to God. This approach was a true revolution. St. Paul writes in the letter to the Romans, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Life is called to become worship of God, but this cannot happen without prayer, especially without liturgical prayer. And this thought will help all of us when we go to Mass on Sunday, I go to pray in community. I go to pray with Christ who is present. When we go to the celebration of a baptism, for example, Christ is here, Christ is there present, who baptizes. But Father, this is an idea. It's a way of saying something. No, it's not a way of saying something. Christ is present. And in the liturgy, you are praying with Christ who is next to you. We've heard our Holy Father's reflection on liturgical prayer this morning. We will now hear Greetings and summaries in various languages, and our Holy Father will greet them. We listen to the French. Donnera la bénédiction apostolique. Il accorde spécialement aux enfants, aux personnes âgées, aux malades et aux personnes qui sont dans l'épreuve. Voici le résumé en français de la catéchèse que vient de prononcer Sa Sainteté le Pape François. Frères et sœurs, dans l'histoire de l'Église, il y a eu plusieurs fois la tentation de pratiquer un christianisme intimiste qui ne reconnaît pas au rite liturgique leur importance spirituelle. La constitution sacrosanctum contilium du Concile Vatican II représente le nœud d'un long chemin parcouru. Elle réaffirme de façon complète et organique l'importance de la divine liturgie pour la vie des chrétiens, car Jésus-Christ n'est pas une idée ou un sentiment mais une personne vivante et son mystère un événement historique. La prière des chrétiens passe par des médiations concrètes. Les saintes écritures, les sacrements, les rites liturgiques. Il n'y a donc pas de spiritualité chrétienne qui n'est pas enracinée dans la célébration des saints mystères. La liturgie est un acte qui fonde l'expérience chrétienne tout entière. C'est un événement, une présence, une rencontre. Le Christ se rend présent dans l'esprit par les signes sacramentaux. Un christianisme sans liturgie est un christianisme sans le Christ. Le Christ est présent dans la célébration du baptême, dans la consécration du pain et du vin dans l'Eucharistie, dans l'onction des malades. La messe est toujours célébrée non seulement par le prêtre qui la préside, mais aussi par tous les chrétiens qui la vivent. Le centre est le Christ. La vie est appelée à devenir un culte à Dieu, mais cela ne peut se faire sans la prière, 
spécialement la prière liturgique. Et maintenant, le Saint-Père va saluer en italien les francophones. Sono lieto di salutare le persone di lingua francese. La Chiesa evangelizza e si evangelizza con la bellezza della liturgia. Chiediamo la grazia di fare un incontro personale e autentico con Cristo vivente nella celebrazione liturgica, perché le nostre vite diventino sacrificio spirituale offerto a Dio. A tutti la mia benedizione. Our Holy Father said, it is my pleasure to greet the French-speaking people. The Church is evangelized and evangelizes with the beauty of the liturgy. Let us ask the grace of a personal and authentic encounter with the living Christ in the liturgical celebration so that our lives might become a spiritual sacrifice offered to God. My benediction. My blessing goes to all of you. And now we listen to the summary and greetings in English. Most Holy Father, the English-speaking faithful joining us through the media wish to express to you their sentiments of respect and esteem and to assure you of their prayers for your ministry as the successor of Peter. At the end of the audience, we will recite together the Our Father in Latin. The Holy Father will then impart his apostolic blessing, which he willingly extends to all children and young people, the elderly and the sick. The following is a summary of the Holy Father's words this morning. Dear brothers and sisters, in our continuing catechesis on prayer, we now turn to the sacred liturgy, the Church's public prayer. The Second Vatican Council stressed the importance of the liturgy together with personal prayer for the spiritual life of Christians. Indeed, all Christian spirituality is grounded in the celebration of the sacred mysteries, in which Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, becomes present in the midst of his people through the mediation of the sacramental signs of bread and wine, water and oil. Just as in the Incarnation the Son of God took flesh and dwelt amongst us, so too he now becomes present in all his saving power through the liturgical celebration of word and sacrament. Our personal prayer is meant to interiorize and draw enrichment from the spiritual treasures of the Church's liturgical prayer. Because the liturgy is the source and summit of our Christian prayer, all of us are called to take an active part in this great act of worship by offering our own lives in union with Christ as a holy and pleasing sacrifice to the Father. The Holy Father will now greet the English-speaking faithful in Italian. Saluto cordialmente i fedeli di lingua inglese. Invito tutti, soprattutto in questo tempo di pandemia, a riscoprire la bellezza della liturgia per nutrire la nostra preghiera personale e a crescere l'adesione delle nostre comunità al Signore. Su voi e sulle vostre famiglie invoco la gioia e la pace di Cristo. Dio vi benedica. I cordially greet the English-speaking faithful, and I invite everyone, especially in this time of pandemic, to rediscover the beauty of the liturgy and its ability to enrich our personal prayer and the growth of our communities in union with the Lord. Upon you and your families, I invoke the joy and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. And now the German summary and greetings. Heiliger Vater, die Gläubigen deutscher Sprache, die über Rundfunk und Internet teilnehmen, bekunden Ihnen, dem Nachfolger des heiligen Petrus, aufrichtige Verbundenheit, Dankbarkeit und Verehrung. Sie versichern Sie zugleich Ihres Besonderen. One of the paragraphs that was referred to in the catechesis this morning comes from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It speaks about the Church's liturgy, and this paragraph says, in the sacramental liturgy of the Church, the mission of Christ 
and of the Holy Spirit proclaims, makes present, and communicates the mystery of salvation, which is continued in the heart that prays. The spiritual writers sometimes compare the heart to an altar. Prayer internalizes and assimilates the liturgy during and after its celebration. Even when it is lived out in secret, prayer is always prayer of the Church. It is communion with the Holy Trinity. Konkretes, objektives, historisches Ereignis. Entsprechend kann auch das christliche Beten nicht nur ein rein geistiges, innerliches, subjektives Geschehen sein. Es braucht die Materialität, Konkretheit und Objektivität der Heiligen Schrift, der Sakramente, der liturgischen Riten. Wir Christen haben keine Angst vor dem Leiblichen und Materiellen, weil dieses in Jesus Christus zum Weg des Heils geworden ist. In der Liturgie und insbesondere in der Feier der Sakramente ereignet sich durch das Wirken des Heiligen Geistes die Vergegenwärtigung Christi und die wirkliche Begegnung mit ihm. Das, was die Kirche als Ganze in der Liturgie feiert, möchte dann von jedem einzelnen Christen in den ganz persönlichen Alltag hinein übertragen werden, damit auch das Leben des Einzelnen zu einem geistigen Opfer, zur Hingabe, zum Gottesdienst wird. Cari fratelli e sorelle di lingua tedesca, lasciamoci trasformare dal Signore attraverso la partecipazione alla liturgia. Con i doni del pane e del vino, lo Spirito Santo trasformi anche noi, affinché diventiamo un solo corpo e un solo Spirito in Cristo, e così un dono gradito a Dio. Our Holy Father said, Dear German-speaking brothers and sisters, let us allow ourselves to be transformed by the Lord through participation in the liturgy with the gifts of bread and wine. May the Holy Spirit transform even ourselves so that we might become one body and one spirit in Christ, and thus a gift pleasing to God. We now hear the greeting in Spanish and our Holy Father himself Padre. will provide the summary. de lengua española que siguen esta catequesis a través de los medios de comunicación desean manifestarle cordialmente sus sentimientos de filial afecto que acompañan con fervientes oraciones por sus intenciones de pastor de toda la iglesia. Al final de este encuentro se recitará el Padre Nuestro en latín. Después el Santo Padre impartirá la bendición apostólica de modo particular a los niños y a los ancianos, a los enfermos y a cuantos sufren. Queridos hermanos y hermanas, hoy consideramos el nexo entre la oración y la liturgia. El Catecismo de la Iglesia Católica nos explica que la oración interioriza y asimila la liturgia durante y después de la misma. Incluso cuando la oración se vive en lo secreto, también esta es oración de la Iglesia que eleva a Dios su plegaria. Como se sabe, a lo largo de la historia de la Iglesia ha estado presente la tentación de practicar un cristianismo intimista, es decir, una religiosidad que no reconocía a la liturgia, a los ritos públicos, su importancia espiritual, hasta considerarla inútil y dañina. Esto llevó a que muchos fieles, participando incluso a la misa dominical, le hayan quitado importancia y hayan buscado alimento para su fe y su vida espiritual en fuentes devocionales y no en la liturgia. Sin embargo, esto está cambiando. La Constitución sobre la Liturgia del Vaticano II subrayó la importancia en la vida de los cristianos de la Divina Liturgia, que es acción de Cristo, que significa y realiza principalmente su misterio pascual. Por ello, no existe espiritualidad cristiana 
que no tenga como fuente la celebración de los divinos misterios, porque la liturgia no es una oración espontánea, sino acción de la Iglesia, encuentro con Cristo mismo, que se hace presente con la fuerza del Espíritu Santo a través de los signos sacramentales para comunicarnos su gracia. Un cristianismo sin liturgia es, por lo tanto, un cristianismo sin Cristo. Saludos cordialmente a los I cordially que greet the faithful of the Spanish-speaking language. Let us ask the Lord that he might enkindle in us the need to participate in the divine mysteries where Christ is present and that through prayer, especially through liturgical prayer, all of our lives might be acceptable worship to God. May the Lord bless you all. We now will hear the greetings and summary in Portuguese. Santo Padre, os fiéis de língua portuguesa, conectados a esta audiência através dos meios de comunicação social, testemunham a vossa santidade sentimentos de gratidão e afeto filial, acompanhados de suas orações, pelas vossas intenções e pelo vosso ministério de sucessor de Pedro. Ao final da audiência, rezaremos o Pai Nosso em latim, Após a oração, o Santo Padre nos concederá a bênção apostólica, de modo especial às crianças, aos idosos, aos doentes e a todos os que sofrem. Leio agora um resumo da catequese do Papa Francisco. Muitas vezes, na história da Igreja, houve a tentação de praticar um cristianismo intimista, uma espiritualidade desvinculada dos ritos litúrgicos. Para superar isto, muito foi feito nas últimas décadas. Em particular, a Constituição Sacrosanctum Concilium reforça a importância da liturgia na vida do cristão, destacando que Jesus Cristo não é uma ideia ou um sentimento, mas uma pessoa viva e o seu, e o seu mistério um evento histórico. A oração dos cristãos se realiza através de mediações concretas, a Sagrada Escritura, os sacramentos, os ritos litúrgicos. Assim, não existe espiritualidade cristã que não esteja enraizada na celebração dos santos mistérios. A liturgia é a ação que fundamenta toda a vivência cristã e, consequentemente, também a oração. Cristo se faz presente pela ação do Espírito Santo através dos sinais sacramentais. Por isso, um cristianismo sem liturgia é um cristianismo sem Cristo. Sempre que celebramos um sacramento, Cristo se faz presente, como quando curava os doentes ou entregava-nos, na última ceia, o seu corpo e sangue para a salvação do mundo. Na liturgia, aquilo que é externo a nós se torna parte de nós. E isto é expresso, inclusive, com o gesto tão natural de comer. Por isso, a missa não pode ser somente ouvida, como se fôssemos espectadores, mas é sempre celebrada, e não somente pelo sacerdote que preside, mas por todos os cristãos que a vivem. A vida é chamada a tornar-se culto a Deus, mas isto não acontecerá sem a oração, especialmente a oração litúrgica. Agora o Santo Padre saudará em italiano os fiéis de língua portuguesa. Saluto cordialmente os fiéis de língua portuguesa. Auro que hoje vossa comunidade experimente uma crescita da vida cristã, tramite uma plena, consapevole e ativa participação às celebrações litúrgicas. Vi benedico de cuore. And our Holy Father said, I cordially greet the Portuguese-speaking faithful. I pray that each one of your communities might experience a growth in Christian life through a full, aware, and active participation in this liturgical celebration. I bless you from my heart. I 
and now the summary and greetings in Arabic. It's always good also to go back to the Apostolic Constitution that that was quoted by our Holy Father, Sacrosanctum Concilium of the Vatican Council, that acknowledges that the liturgy is the summit toward which the activity of the Church is directed. That document tells us that at the same time it is the font from which all her power flows. For the aim and object of apostolic works is that all who are made children of God by faith and baptism should come together to praise God in the midst of his church, to take part in the sacrifice and to eat the Lord's Supper. That Apostolic Constitution continues, the liturgy in its turn moves the faithful filled with the Paschal Sacraments to be one in holiness. It prays that they may hold fast in their lives to what they have grasped by their faith. The renewal of the Eucharist of the covenant between the Lord and man draws the faithful into the compelling love of Christ and sets them on fire. From the liturgy, therefore, and especially from the Eucharist, as from a font, grace is poured forth upon us, and the sanctification of every man and woman in Christ and the glorification of God, to which all other activities of the Church are directed as toward their end is achieved in the most efficacious way possible. نتحد في عمله الخلاصي وأضاف قداسته عندما بدأ المسيحيون الأوائل يقومون بعبادتهم وكانوا يصلون فعلوا ذلك من خلال مراجعة أعمال وكلمات يسوع بنور وقوة الروح القدس حتى تصبح حياتهم ذبيحة روحية تقدم لله والآن تحية البابا باللغة الإيطالية Saluto i fedeli di lingua araba. La nostra vita è chiamata a diventare culto a Dio, ma questo non può avvenire senza la preghiera, specialmente la preghiera liturgica. Il Signore vi benedica a tutti e vi protegga sempre da ogni male. Our Holy Father said, I greet the Arabic-speaking faithful. Our lives are called to become worship of God, but this cannot happen without prayer, especially liturgical prayer. May the Lord bless all of you and protect all of you always from every evil. And now we hear the greeting and summary in Polish. And the Constitution on the Liturgy also continues about our own participation. It says, in order that the Liturgy may be able to produce its full effects, it is necessary that the faithful come to it with proper dispositions, that their minds should be attuned to their voices, and that they should cooperate with divine grace, lest they receive it in vain. It then recalls that pastors need to remind the faithful that there is something more required than the mere observation of laws governing valid and licit celebration of the liturgy, and it is also their duty to ensure the faithful that the faithful take part fully aware of what they are doing in the liturgy. And then it says the spiritual life is not limited solely to participation in the liturgy. Each Christian is called to pray with his or her brothers and sisters because we need to enter into the chamber, our inner chamber, to pray to the Father in secret. 
And still, according to the teaching of the Apostle, we are called to pray without ceasing. We learn from the same Apostle that we must always bear about in our body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifest in our body. This is, of course, a reference to the Apostle Paul. This is why we ask the Lord in the sacrifice of the Mass that receiving the offering of the spiritual victim the Lord might fashion us for himself as an eternal gift. różnorodności darów i posług włączamy się w Jego działanie. Życie jest powołane do tego, by stawać się ofiarą dla Boga, ale nie może się to dziać bez modlitwy, zwłaszcza modlitwy liturgicznej. Obecnie Ojciec Święty pozdrowi wszystkich Polaków w języku włoskim. Saluto cordialmente tutti Polaki. La liturgia della Chiesa è fonte della pietà e nutrimento della preghiera personale. Anche dalla comune preghiera liturgica, quando siamo radunati intorno a Cristo, inizia la realizzazione del comandamento dell'amore verso Dio e verso il prossimo, perché pregando gli uni per gli altri ci aiutiamo reciprocamente e portiamo i pesi gli uni degli altri. Vi benedico di cuore. Our Holy Father said, I cordially greet all Poles. The Church's liturgy is a font of piety and is a nourishment for our personal prayer. From the common liturgical prayer, we, when we are gathered around Christ, that is where we begin to realize the commandment of love of God and love of neighbor, because praying for each other, by praying for each other, we help each other, we mutually help each other to bear one another's burdens. I bless you from my heart. And now the greeting of the Italian-speaking faithful who wish to express, who express their fidelity and affection and pray for all the intentions of your pastoral ministry. At the end of this audience, we will recite the Our Father in Latin, at the end of which our Holy Father will impart his apostolic blessing in a special way to children, to the elderly, and to those who suffer. Tomorrow marks the first international day of human fraternity established by a recent resolution of the United Nations General Assembly. This initiative also takes note of the meeting on the 4th of February 2019 in Abu Dhabi, when the Grand Imam of al Azhar, Ahmad al Tayeb, and I signed the document on human fraternity for world peace and living together. I am very pleased that the nations of the entire world are joining in this celebration aimed at promoting interreligious and intercultural dialogue. And so, tomorrow afternoon, I will take part in a virtual meeting with the Grand Imam of al Azhar, with the United Nations General Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, and other leaders. The UN resolution recognizes the contribution that dialogue among all religious groups can make towards an improved awareness and understanding of the common values shared by all humankind. May this be our prayer today and our commitment every day of the year. 
I extend a cordial greeting to the Italian-speaking faithful. I encourage you to nourish yourselves often with the Word of God, especially in the liturgy, applying it to every circumstance of your lives. And I'm thinking, as usual, to the elderly, to the young people, to those who are ill, and to newlyweds. Yesterday we celebrated the memorial of the presentation of the Lord in the temple through the hands of the Virgin Mary, who presented Jesus to God. Let us live that vibrant hope that she, the Queen of Heaven, might also present each one of us to the Lord and all of our needs. Don't get tired of placing your lives into the merciful hands of God the Father. And now we pray the Our Father. Pater Noster, qui es in Cielo, santificetur nomen tu, adveni a veni, via tu volontà sua, sicut in Cielo et in Terra, pane nostro un quotidiano da nobis odie, ed imite nobis e vita nostra, sicut nos dimiti in posse vittoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentazione, Sed libera nos amano. Domino Hoviscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Sid nomen Domini benedictum. Ex hoc nunc et usque in seculum. Aiuterium nostrum in nomine Domini. Qui feci celum et terra. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pacha, et Filius, et Spiritus Santos. Amen. Amen. And this now ends the live-streamed broadcast of the Pope's weekly general audience from here in the library of the Apostolic Palace. We invite, we invite you to join us again on Sunday. That's 12 o'clock local time in Rome for the live broadcast of the Pope's weekly Angelus message and recitation of this traditional Marian prayer. I also invite you to visit the Vatican News web portal, our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube accounts for coverage of today's general audience, and other Vatican and world news. On behalf of Vatican Media, I would like to thank all of the technicians who have made this broadcast possible, and to all of you for joining us today. Laudator Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ. <laughs>